do thank God once again for Jesus. Thank God for all you ever of the youth for being in this place. Amen. Because truly we serve an awesome and mighty good God. How many can truly say that God is good? Somebody else told you. Uh -huh. Can you say it? Okay. I told God that God has been mighty good yeah. to me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. We thank God. We thank God for Jesus. To me, yeah. an honor to see old Justice. Amen. And Justice. Yeah. 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 Justice left there a little girl. That's yeah. right. Came back here in college. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. We thank God for you all. Thank you for the word. won't be long this morning, but thank you for the word from the Lord. Let's go back to Luke, the 18th chapter. Luke chapter 18. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 18, reading verses 9 through 14. Amen. You keep your speed, but Luke the 18th chapter, verses 9 through 14. I'm reading from the King James Version. Amen. 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 And it reads as follows. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this public. Guess what I do, Lord? I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the public, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto the heavens, but smoke upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'll tell you this. Man went down to his house, what? Justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be. In this text, this man prayed in his prayer, he used the word I five times. Okay. In that short prayer, he talked about himself, the word I, five times. And just for a brief moment, let's be from the subject, the eyes have it, but the humble exalted. Amen. Amen. The eyes have it, but the humble exalt it. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, this hour that you have given us, that we may hear from you. Speak, Holy Ghost, only as you can. Let nothing be added, nor anything taken away. I pray now, God, to prepare our hearts to receive this word that you have from on high. We pray, Lord, that fall on good grounds, that we be not only hearers, but also doers of your word. I pray even as David prayed, he said, let the words of my mouth, in the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. The eyes have it, but God exalted or exhaust the home. And when you look at this text, this, this book of Luke in the 18th chapter, it starts off with God saying, all men are always to what? Pray and not fail. In other words, we're always to pray and not give up. Not quit, not lose heart, because life can throw us some things in our path, circumstances in our life that would cause some of us to get knocked down to our knees. But the Bible says you always should converse or communicate with God and don't give up. Yeah. He's not saying to you and me that we should be on our knees 24 
for ourselves, but he's saying that when we're going through things and going through storms, we always should have a relationship of prayer with God. Yeah. And that's one of the hardest things for some of us to have because we only pray when we're going through something. But when everything seems to be good in our lives, we don't have time to pray because everything's all right. But let tragedy happen in your life. And good God Almighty, we are praying day and night. But the Bible says we always to pray and don't give up. And so if we continue in prayer, a lot of things we go after, we might not even go through. All right. If we just start talking to God about it, even before it happens, God, I need you. God, have mercy. Because I don't care who you are, Gene. Life can throw you some things, Detroit, that will cause you to question God, or do you really love me? Yes. God, are you really who you say you are? But God shows himself over and over yes, he does. again. Yes. He tells us that we always ought to pray. pray. Then he comes down the further in the same text and give us a parable about uh, this woman, this widow, who, who needed something from this man, this, this judge, but yet the judge would not grant her what she petitioned. But the woman was persistent in her asking, and after a while, he said, even though I don't fear God, I have no regard for man, but because this woman wearied me, I'm going to give her what she asked. In other words, because this woman is, is having my head her, this woman is getting on my last nerve. Every time I look at my caller ID, it's the same phone number. And then she tried to trick me one time and called for a real phone, but I knew it was her all along. Yeah. Yeah. But this woman wearied me. Yeah. And because she wearied me, I said, give her what she wants. Well, Let's get rid of her. And then God came back and said, wait a minute, even though I love you, even though I care about you, how much would I give those who keep continually asking? Here is a man that didn't fear God. He didn't care about nobody, but because of her persistency and her consistency in her prayer, he gave her what she wanted. Jesus said, how much more would the Father give unto you to those who ask him? If a man don't care then about whether you have food on your table or money in your pocket, but because of your asking continuously, he gave. How much more would God give you and me who care all that is to know, know all that is to know about us, who say, cast all your cares upon me? If I were to pray constantly to God, God will grant me that which I ask. But the problem is we don't pray enough. Yes. That's right. It's good right. to pray when your money gets funny. Mm -hmm. Pray hard. Yeah. Oh, you pray hard? Yeah, oh, Lord. You might even start speaking in tongues. You start, you pray so hard, you start sweating. Yeah. Some of y'all might even start hooping in your prayer. Oh, yeah. Make it plain. When you're going through something. But when you be of a pain, uh -huh. you got enough money to take the chicken to check the cheese. Uh -huh. Then you ain't worried about it. Uh -huh. Because you think everything is good. But how many know whatever good is, evil is always present? Oh, right. How many know you can be up today and down tomorrow? Yeah. You can have money today and be funny tomorrow. But guess what? If you continue in your prayer, God always seems to make a way out of nowhere. He'll provide whatever you need. But he said, because this woman weary me, Brother Pete, she said, I'm going to give her what she wants. How much Amen. church would God give you and me? Yeah. This man didn't care about nobody. Nobody feared God. But because of her persistence and her asking, he gave. Jesus said, I care, all, I care about that. I care so much I sent my son to die for you. I, I care so much I went you, I died in your place. I care so much I stepped in the courtroom and you was guilty, about to be sentenced. I say, put that sentence on me and let them go free. How much more would your father do? And then we come on down to the text 
And then we get to he he asked a question in verses verse 13. He asked a question in verse 13. Y'all with me? Amen. Not verse 13, verse, verse 8, verse 8. Look what he says. I tell you, verse 8 says in 18, 8, I tell you that he will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what you say, but speedily. But the question is, when I come, will I find this kind of faith on earth? Or will I find that as long as I can see it, I can believe it? But faith is to walk out on nothing and believe that something is there. Faith is to say, even when I can't see my way through it, I believe that God's going to make a way for me. Faith says, even though the doctor said no, God can still say yes. Faith says, when I don't have no money, God has a ram in the bush and always will make a way out on him. God says, when I come, when I find this kind of faith on earth, would that be somebody can go through a storm today and don't know how they're going to come out of it, but expect God to move on their behalf? I'm not going to cry all night long. I'm waiting on God. Anybody here waiting on God? Can you truly say, I prayed to God for something and I have not got it yet, but guess what? I'm going to stand and wait on God. Because the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall not have a weed, the deacons want and not be weary. I got the folks up in on my way. On earth. Yeah. Uh-huh. We waited, Brother King. Man, it came by and did what he needed to do because we waited. Uh-huh. Some of the folks that were coming did not come, but we waited. Because we believed that God was going to send somebody. Good God Almighty. Would I find faith on the earth? Would I find somebody on the earth? That the doctor said, you ain't going to be up to tomorrow, but you can say, I don't know what tomorrow may bring, but if God can, I know God will, and guess what? God can. Right. So we're going to take the ear out of it and say, God can. I don't believe God can. Yes. Yes. You don't have any witnesses up in here that say, God has made a way for me.
and start finding fault in him. See the crust in his eyes. Then can we truly be clean? But he says, look at look, look what this, this, this publican, this, 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 this self-righteous, not the public, but this self-righteous Pharisee says he go down to prayer. Because even though Brother King, he called God name, he really talking to himself. So if I can get down and just say, God, I come in the name of. But then talk about us. Five times I use the word I. You know what he says? In the text, y'all read it. If you don't turn to it, or look on the screen. Look at these two men with one, one a Pharisee and the other was a public. In other words, he was a tax collector. Even though he was already a tax collector, they still hated the day. Well, some of y'all already got the phone call. <laughs> or the letter. Okay, well, but one time I ain't answered the letter. Uh -huh. I had a power. Uh -huh. Then I got my check from Friday. Uh -huh. And don't work down at all the time. And my whole checkbook was a dollar and thirteen cents. Wow. They were like my mom. They showed me that they could tell me. So these tax collectors in the Pharisee, the students of the law, the doctor of the law, but somebody in society went down and began to pray. In verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with who? Himself. He called God's name, but he prayed to himself. Look what he said. Look what he said. God, I boy, thank thee mm -hmm. that I too, not as of me, are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. Mm -hmm. I read, fan false twice a week. I give. All oh, my things ties and, and then I possess. He's a self-righteous man, supposed to be praying to God mm -hmm. for God atoning grace. Well, mm -hmm. But yet he's telling God everything good right. about himself. Uh -huh. But if you take God out of the equation, well. it doesn't matter what he does, he's still on his way to hell. But he says, I fast, I give, I'm not like no men, I'm not even like him. I can say all day long what I'm not. Maybe. I can spend another day saying what I am. Well, and neither one of them is good. Give up my heart what I've been. True humbleness is simply seeing the way things really are, or the way they are. True humbleness, if you're truly humble, then you know that you are nothing without God. Right. If you truly humble, you'll realize I'm only righteous because He's righteous. Right. If you're truly humble, you will know everything you have. God gave it to you. Right. And you will really know God gave it and God take it away. If you really, really humble, then you will know that if God take his, the blood of Jesus away from you and me, our sin still right. remain. Right. Y'all ain't gonna shout today. I'm talking to the self-righteous. Not in here, but over there.
for God to justify you. You can never rank enough for God to justify you. The only reason why and the only way you're justified is that you have faith in Jesus Christ. Because he got up and God accepted the sacrifice. It says the pelican went down justified, which means God looked him up and received his prayer of have mercy. On me. Hey, Look what the hey, text says. But you know the Pharisee, he said, for the king, I fast twice a week. Mm-hmm. Because they believe that Moses went up to receive the law on the fifth day of the week. Mm-hmm. And he came down with the law on the second day of the week. Yes. And they believe if they do that, they close the guard. So some, they pray, they fasted on Monday, and they fasted on Thursday. But yet they thought that would make them righteous. But all they did, Jesus made them hungry. They got them out two or three pounds, but it did not make them righteous. Your fasting won't make you righteous. It may strengthen your faith, but it can't make you righteous. And so we look at the last test and get ready to close this thing up. I told you we're going to try some of y'all want to try to tap them back to our folks. Oh, Pharisee. Are they myself righteous? But he's going on down. Look what he says in, in, verse, in verse 14. In the book of Matthew, all the 13, he said, God be merciful to me, for I am just a sinner. In other words, he said, he said, God, I want you to be my advocate. Jesus, be my advocate. Go before the just judge. And let him know that I'm begging for this sacrificial atonement. It's what he's simply asking. God have mercy on me. In other words, grant me the atoning sacrifice of forgiving my sins. A lot of us pray. And we pray, God, this is what I need. God, this is what I want. Bless this person. Heal that person. But do we ever say, God, forgive me of my sins? Right. Because unless you think you self-righteous, you still have faults. Yes, we still commit sin. Yes, we Even do. though with the God's eye and the spiritual eye, we cannot commit sin. Because he don't see us in that way. He paid for all of our sin. And if we really, who we say we are in Christ, we would just go out there and sin because God will not impute sin to us because we know God what God done for us in our conscience. Will not allow you and me to do certain things. But the self righteous went back to his place just as he was. But he's a man, G. He's a man down there that just said, Have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. God, I need your atoning grace. And God simply said, uh, Jesus said in verse 14, He said, I tell you, this man went down to his house, what? Justified. This man went down to his house, justified. Good God Almighty, this man don't been exalted. He may have went down a sinner, but he came out of the prayer room a saint. He may have went down broke, but came out with everything he needed. He may not have had nothing in his pocket, but when he had nothing, I'm nothing without God. God Justified. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine? 
God knowing everything uh, uh, Kelly, about you and me. But still he said, look, I want to die for him. Because that self-pride, they gonna move God, that self-righteousness will never be justified before God. I can do all kind of good acts. But if I don't acknowledge Charles, that I am who I am by the grace of God, if I don't not acknowledge it was nobody but God that died for me and took away my sin, it wasn't because he called me to preach that I'm saved. I got saved first. Then he called me to preach, but he would call me while I wasn't saved. I say, surely God ain't calling me. Right after y'all been self, y'all can't, y'all can't relate to this because you've been saved all your life. I'm just talking about a few folks like me. They know that no God found you somewhere. Right? And he found me. I went up in the church. When God called me, I wasn't doing all I ought to have been doing. God called me and said, I'm going to use you for my glory. And I said, surely you're not talking to me. But then books have met somebody say they've been, they've been saved all their life. And they knew from a baby they were going to preach the gospel. I said, well, that may be good, brother. But what have you ever done wrong? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He was like that man went to Jesus. Jesus, what must I do to be saved? You know, man, he say, well, I, yeah, I don't, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you decide to be my disciple, go sell all your hair and follow me. Oh. Guess what? We don't even hear from him again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We all have some thoughts. Amen. Amen. That's why we ought to be continuously in prayer. Yes. God, forgive me. That's right. Stop finding fault in somebody else. You don't found so much fault in everybody else that you get up in hell yourself because you ain't looking up, you ain't even looking in the mirror yourself. That's right. That's right. Too many self-righteous fault finders. Mm -hmm. They find fault everywhere, trying to find fault. Can't get even pay attention, trying to find fault. Can't even see what God is doing. Can't even hear what God is saying because we're trying to find. And mess around and miss what God has for you because we're trying to find fault in somebody else to justify us. But guess what? You can be justified like that person if you just believe. Yeah. Believe. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we're not justified because we don't believe. We, are here. we think self-righteousness can, can move God. It's nothing really I can do in this body before I met Jesus Christ that would have moved God because I got too much baggage. I could have been a good, I could have been your knees. I could have gave arms. I could have feared God. Mm. But if I don't have Jesus, I don't have nothing. There's no way to the Father but through Jesus Christ. And you got to acknowledge that you have a need for Jesus. Can I tell you that when I came, truly came and, and gave myself to the Lord, not when I walked up there and shook the preacher's hand. Not when I, I say, yeah, I, I believe Jesus died on Karen's cross. I'm talking I really gave myself yeah. to God. Mm -hmm. My life began to change immediately. I had so, and not, for, not to my good, I had so many issues come up. The moment I truly gave myself to God, the devil started fighting me on every side. Mm -hmm. Sickness in my body, relation, everything going okay. wrong. That's what he do. But then I found something. I didn't have to fight the battle no more. Mm -hmm. God started making ways out of nowhere. Yeah. God started providing. When I started trusting, him. And I'm telling somebody this morning, don't get so caught up in what you're going through. Because if you're going through something, you ought to be shouting. 
Because after a while, it's going to be well. It's one thing if you're stagnated in something. But if you say, God, I'm going through something. You got to thank God. But after a while, you, that means you're still moving. After a while, that thing ain't going to be behind you. As long as you're going through. Because that means there's a blessing on the other side of through. You got to, oh, you just stay on that. You got to go through just to Church, church, church. Just know. It's some blessed folks up in here. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Look at this. Money don't make man. Man make money. If you think money makes you a man, then you got life all messed up. You make money, money can't make you right. a man. That's right. That's right. See, a lot of folks got a lot of money, but a little boy mentality. Yeah. And that's because they think they're self-righteous. Because I tried this, she got to know I'm good. Because I live at this zip code, she got to know I'm Good. But in reality, that's his mama. House. And And his mama. Car. But because you see on the outside, I'm around you. I'm just going for some reason. God always take me somewhere and I ain't got no place to go. You're on the right, bro. But you can't always pick your man yeah. by the cover of the book. Make it right. Because a wolf can play like a sheep for a good wife. But along the way, the wolf veins gonna come out. And you don't get a chance to see his face. But you don't make a blinder to him because you're looking at what he tried. Mm-hmm. Or when he acted the deep, it say Karen Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> and so my point of all God was going to say to somebody right here, there's a blessing right before you. Yeah. But you looking past it right. for somebody in a suit. They got to take back to the funeral home Uh-oh. Uh-oh. to the church home. Right. <laughs> what you talking about? What we? Hey, Joey, why are you here? Talk about this stuff. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody's going to realize yeah. everything that lives. I go. That's right. That's right. Make it plain. I'm through whatever God has. I'm just, he, 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 he loves somebody so much. Yeah. He's letting you know, and, 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 and even in the prayer, don't give up on what you're about to give up on. Right. Just for something that you think is good. Right. But in reality, it ain't nothing but a wolf. Yeah. And she cold. Yeah. And the moment you leave, what God has. Somebody about to leave a man uh-huh. for a boy. Uh oh. 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 That he ain't never but a fool. Mm. And you ain't even believe it. Mm. See, when David went to Nabal, and that's Nabal to provide him with necessities, mm. Nabal said no. And then when Abigail, his wife, heard about it, she went to David 
and said, David, forgive me. Here's everything you desire. Neighbor name means fool. There was a woman, David a king, and a fool. She didn't really know what a king was until she met David and then realized she'd been married to a fool. God don't show somebody the blessing that he had before you. But because his fingernails not clean, and he ain't wearing no suits, you saying that can't be him. But God said you are about to leave a king for a fool. Because don't get caught up in what he is. God trying to reveal to you what he's going. Right. And this is the last thing, God, God, I wish you, I'm ready to sit down, but I'm sweating there. <laughs> Listen, man. I know she. Oh, yeah. Sasha, I know she, y'all. Slow down. She's all that. She's she's all that. But what you don't know is that she's crazy. And I'm not saying this to be funny. That same woman that you want to leave your queen for is going to be the same one that is your life. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We come and say thank you. Pray for that man right now. Yeah. That you will open up his spiritual eyes. Yeah. To let him know, Lord, that that woman has nothing good for him. He's so caught up on the outside, God, that you're revealing even right now. That if he don't change his heart, she don't be his demise. Because she's already scheming the plan to set you up. But God saying, man, who gave stars for the eat, do not, do not fall into that trap. Everything seems good to you. It's not good for you. God said, repent right now. Turn from that way. Go back home to your wife. And do your first work soul. God loves you. God loves you more than you ever know. And you tuned in this day just for that word. So you know that. You no longer at a crossroad. God has given you the answer to what you've been praying. Yes, she will set you up. Yes, she has set a trap that you're going to fall in this day. Don't go. God said, don't go. He's giving you a way of escape. God, we thank that you love us so much that you will save us from us. As we give you our honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now give God a hand of praise for you. Your blessing is right at your doorstep. 
ourselves. And some of us are about to walk away from the blessing that God has for us. And one of the reasons why you can't leave. And you got to go back. And because you think he's about to change. He can't change. He is who he is. Walk away. You already gone. But you feel about going back to something that's not good for you. Thank God. Give God glory that he loves you enough. Oh, yeah. Say, so stay just where you at. Don't go back. No matter what he gives, what he says, stay away. And that's not coming from you. It's coming from the Spirit. I pray that whoever you are, you receive what does say the Lord to you. Amen.